How you doing? This is Ivan with Bite Size Wisdom for Busy People. And I'm back with another idea to help you live more consciously. I have spoken before on the importance of making an aim for oneself in respect to our self-development work. Our aim is what keeps us on the right track. After careful and sincere self-observation of being objectively mindful of our behavior, we should be able to identify areas that we need to work on in order to progress on our journey of becoming more conscious. This data helps us to formulate an aim for our self-development work. For example, you may discover that feelings of jealousy are especially damaging to you. So your aim is to understand and overcome them. Today, we will talk a little bit about understanding where our aim comes from and that it can come from a right or wrong place within us. We need to have a deep and clear comprehension of our aim, of ourselves, of our attention, because we may have an aim that is right, but be coming from a wrong place, or we may have an aim that is wrong, but be coming from a right place in us. In order to understand where our aim is coming from, we need to have an intimate relationship with our attention and how it relates to the main centers in our body. I will list some videos in the description if you just click below. And I will go over this in more detail if you're interested. But briefly, our three centers or three brains are our intellectual center, our head brain, the emotional center, and our moving instinctive center, which is responsible for our body's movement and digestion, etc. These three centers can be further subdivided into having their own intellectual, emotional, and moving parts. This is important to know in our practice of self-observation because we can then understand moment to moment with mindful awareness where and how our attention is functioning. You will learn to notice their own unique inner flavor. For example, when our attention is being held and drawn by an, ex an external object that is fascinating to us, you can then observe that our attention is primarily focused through the emotional part of our emotional center. In this state, our attention is held effortlessly. In order to increase our self-awareness, we must be in the intellectual parts of at least our emotional and intellectual centers. The only way to be in the intellectual part of our intellectual center is to consciously direct our attention. Directing our attention automatically puts us in the more conscious parts of our centers, but this takes energy, so most people prefer to act inattentively. When our aim comes from the moving parts of our centers, this is coming from the most mechanical parts of ourselves, so our aim will be wrong because attention isn't needed in the mechanical parts of ourselves. They can function with minimal attention. For example, the moving and mechanical part of our intellectual center is when our thinking is working purely by means of association. It's a mechanical process. One thought leads to the next thought all without us being really conscious of this process. This is the level from where most of the population predominantly operates from. To consciously direct our attention takes understanding and energy. For example, when someone is listening to you mechanically, they may be hearing your words, but they aren't listening because attention is zero so they aren't able to really extract the meaning of your words. We cannot formulate a correct aim when we are in these lower mechanical states because our attention is just scattered and we will be too easily distracted to understand and carry out our aim. This also explains when you are in these states and you promise someone that you will do something and then later you change your mind and don't do it, when you made that decision, it wasn't coming from a place of understanding, from a 
more stable and real place within you. So it's important to realize that whatever data is stored in our mechanical parts doesn't really belong to us. These can take the form of opinions and ideas that we pick up from our environment and then we will just pair it back to somebody whenever they are stimulated by association. You can see these are just canned responses. We don't have any real understanding of them. You can see this when they interview people on the streets, if you ever watch on YouTube and ask about any current political or social issues, many people will just respond with these random tidbits they picked up here and there and will believe it's really coming from them. Now, whenever we really are learning something and we can engage our emotional and intellectual parts, ideally the whole of ourselves at the same time, then it will make a really deep impression in our being. It will become ours and we will be able to use it. This brings to mind the famous saying from the Bible of he who has ears, let him hear. This just means in order for us to really understand the inner content of words, we must be in a more conscious part of ourselves. We can't mechanically listen. Otherwise, we will just take the literal meaning of the words and not the deeper meaning they may be indicating. This is important for us to understand if we are to really implement higher wisdom in our lives, the sacred ideas from all the major traditions, they must fall on the more conscious parts of ourselves. We can't take these ideas in the same way that we may take ordinary things in our life. For example, like reading a recipe for cooking dinner, we can use minimal attention for a task like this. Our moving parts are glued to our senses and therefore their energy is just primarily going out into our external world. The more conscious parts of ourselves put us into deeper contact with our inner senses, with the ability to survey and navigate our internal world. This is where higher ideas are able to be properly understood and allowed to do their work. Each of our centers has its own unique energy unique intelligence that when they are integrated and working coherently will give us an accurate view of things. If I mechanically hear an idea, let's say about how to meditate, I may think I understand because I know the words being spoken, but unless I really pay attention with the whole of my being and then actually put it into practice, it will just remain as hearsay. So in order for you to make a correct aim, you need to make sure you are in the right state, in an attentive state that involves your entire being in a balanced way. If you notice that your energy is low and your attention is scattered, it's better to not make any important decisions. When we are in our mechanical parts, we can only see things one at a time. It is better when we are in our more conscious parts because conscious energy can see several things together. It's therefore always a good practice to ask yourself, where am I? Meaning, where am I in my internal geography? If I'm not in a good place, to then do what I can to get to a better place within myself, to consciously shift my location inwardly, all right guys, so that's my idea today. Learn to master your attention. Understand the different types of attention and how they function. How to use your attention to get into the more conscious parts of your thinking, feeling, and sensing so that your self-development work pays off. You can do that through various spiritual exercises like insight meditation, self-observation through various mindfulness practices, as they require the conscious directing of your attention, etc. All right, guys, that's it for today. I hope you enjoyed today's video. If you did, please help me out and share with anyone who may find this content valuable. 
I really appreciate it. And I hope you're doing well wherever you are. Take care. Peace.